My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you the most important IntelliJ coding shortcuts that you need to know to be more productive. Of course our IDEs contain a lot of lot of shortcuts and it would be good to know all of them but they're just a handful that we really need to know and that we use probably all the time. So if we have a class, something like this here, and then, well, you very likely know about a coding shortcut, for example, system out, and then here it already shows an um, code completion. If that weren't the case, control space for a basic code completion. So it's not just that, well, we can type this um, here, so print line, and then if we type control space, it will just complete, well, whatever was selected. So for example, if you have something like um, to string and this is already selected the first one here that matches and then we can either press enter or press well control space to um, complete this and then again if this completion weren't shown you can press control space so that just is a basic co-completion and I'm very sure you know about this but it already helps a lot so IntelliJ does most of the typing then the next one is, well, complete current statement, which is control shift enter. So this is super helpful. And that's the reason why typically I don't type while closing brackets and semicolons myself. So here they were already inserted. But if that weren't the case, if I say, well, control shift enter, this just tries to complete whatever the current statement is. And it tries to be quite smart about it. So if I say there is a string just hello without the closing, if I say, Control shift enter it will just will close the string close the braces and the semicolon and this also um, works including a basic code completion so if I would call this main um, method here and then include the arcs and then this is already sort of completed I could control shift enter and then it will automatically complete um, the statement here invoke the argument and well, insert the semicolon here as well. So it tries to be quite smart about it, what you would like to complete. And this is something I'm pressing all the time. So typically I don't uh, press these semicolons and closing braces that will be just inserted by IntelliJ. Another sort of quick fix um, way is Alt Enter. That's also a really important one. It shows you a lot of things about fixing, um, fixing some mistakes. So if I would have some new method that here would well it doesn't exist yet I could press alt enter and then it tries to well suggest something smart so it says well either create a new method here or well rename the reference to something that actually exists or I just create the method here and then uh, this is already done so that's a sort of quick fix this also works for all sorts of stuff that you could um, have so for example if I would press list off and then it already suggests the import alt enter you saw it it wants to import this so alt enter yes that does work i could go over this again and say okay now please add a static import for list.off for this method so then it does this i do this quite often for static imports or replace the static import again and things like that so alt enter is a quick fix for all sorts of actions you can just hover over something alt enter and then we'll see what it suggests or just when you have an actual error, you can fix it with the, well, if it's an obvious thing, such as a missing import. The next important thing is to generate some code. For that, I will just quickly create a new class, some thing here. And for this, assuming this would be a POJO where we say, well, it should just include some private string name and some ID or whatever. And now we would like to include getters and setters. So this works uh, quite easily. Generate code with alt insert. So this, usually opens up well such a menu where we you can either select this with um, your keyboard air, um, arrows but uh, i would even suggest to just type something for example i always type gs for getter and setter so that's unique here and then enter so that's just easier and here you can also as in all menus in intellij use the keyboard um, for example it shows you if you press alt then you just see what you would need to alt and some other key. So for example, get to template, whatever would you like to select here, or especially these, so you can navigate to them or even say, okay, um, control, uh, control A for select all. So then all are selected and enter. So again, again, you can do all of this, but only the keyboard, you don't need to touch the mouse. You can say generate getters and setters, enter, control A for select all and then just select all of them and then it will be generated in this order 
of the fields. Of course, you can do this for constructors. This is quite common. So you say, well, select again, some or none, which you see down there, which is then alt N. If you say you want a no ars constructor and things like that. So this of course works or some other things where now it's more common to say, maybe you would like to have some final fields, then you could have two ways either again, have alt enter and then already suggest to have some constructor with parameters or of course include alt insert, include um, a constructor and then it already selects them because it knows well they are final. So they need to be set here. So that is also quite helpful to generate code. And another thing that is super important that we do all the time is to rename things, whether it's well here, a constructor or a method or a class, we can just rename things with shift F six. So that's something where then we can say, okay, uh, this is a thing and then enter. And then that's of course renamed here, including the constructor and of course, including the file name. If like myself, you use um, idea vim, then I suggest that you have the refactor mode set to keep or to something that is more predictable than the default. So keep means that it's in the same mode, like you were typing in your vim mode. So it's just predictable in which mode it is. Otherwise, you might uh, just um, unwantingly overwrite some characters. So here, for example, I was in a normal mode, so I'm still in the normal mode. Or if I'm in the insert mode that I'm still in the insert mode, things like that. So you just not accidentally uh, press something wrong that helps. So with these shortcuts already, these I would say are the most important uh, already that are being used all the time. But of course, I want to show you a few extra. These are let's let's say the second um, priority, maybe that also help a lot that I use all the time. So the first one is to reformat code. That's control alt L. That's also what I press all the time. I even, um, well, I had it um, as a habit already. So that's just in a muscle memory. Once I kind of like, I, you don't need to save the files in IntelliJ, but that's uh, what I do all the, t uh, all the time. I format code and I also include it in the options to optimize imports. So if you have something like an uh, import where we just had something like uh, collections and I didn't uh, use the collection then, if I say control alt L, it will just import all of these, remove the unwanting um, the format, all of these, remove the unwanted imports and things like that. So that's also something that's quite helpful. As for other coding, especially extracting values or variables or methods, that's also something that you should look into, especially because it's easy to remember. And these are extract variables or fields or constant or parameters or methods. That is all pretty much the same pattern. If we say we have something like hello world. Now to set a variable with this would be very easy either. Well, introduce local vari variable with alt enter or control alt V. And then this is some hello. So control alt and V for variable quite easy to remember. That also works if you're in some sort of statement. So if we say um, that was wrapped with system out. And now I want to hover over my code and say, no, wait a second, I would like to have a variable for this inside, then just hover over it, control alt V, and then it will already will go over your um, hello, because this was what you have selected or what was under your cursor at that time. So you, here you could also say, well, have a value for this. Or so it doesn't really uh, kind of make sense, but you could. And again, you hover over what you would like to extract and then control alt V for extract variable. Easy to remember because there are a, a lot of nice mnemonics going on here. So V for variable, F for field, C for constant, uh, P for parameter and M for method. So easy to remember and you can extract all of these things. I very quickly want to show this. So for example, if we say for some reason, wherever that makes sense, we would like to have a field instead for hello world. So same story, control alt F, and then it has some field. And then you say, well, this, okay, here is already static. Why? Because we're in a static context, otherwise it wouldn't do so. So you see, again, our ID is very smart. And now it has some private static field about this. Okay, let's quickly move over to the other um, class. So it's, it's not the case that we have necessarily fields, but here, um, same story, we could say we have some um, method. And then we say we have this hello. Then we have a field which is not uh, private. I'll show this again. Control Alt F. 
that then, um, uh, uh, sorry, which is private but not final, that then we can say now it is a private uh, non-static field. Okay, so same story for um, parameter, control alt p parameter. So then this will just uh, be here and also um, it depends on the invocations. Now we didn't have an invocation. Let's quickly change this. So for example, if here we would say um, the method would be invoked here. So then this is where IntelliJ really shines because then it's quite smart about it. What it does with, well, the arguments that then of course need to be passed for the invocation. So either then they are here quite literal or whatever you uh, did inside. So this works really well. Okay, so this was extract variable field and uh, parameter constant. Of course, you could probably imagine it's the same thing. Uh, control Alt C and then it suggests a different naming. Same story. So again, easy to remember because of these mnemonics and probably the most helpful ones for coding and delegation is extract a method. Control Alt M, you guessed it. And with this, I could say, well, for example, I have some invocations here, whatever that makes sense. I would like to Control Alt M extract a method, do something, and there you go. And with all of these, what I just showed, you could also inline things. So that's then the opposite. And that's Control Alt N for inline. So then if I say, oh, wait a second, this method was wrong, I do want to inline this again, turn it back, Control Alt N, and then it even asks you, okay, inline all, remove the method, inline all, but keep the method, and well, you can read it for yourself. If you want to select this quickly, you can either use cursor arrows or then press and hover Alt, and then it will show you the mnemonics. So to say, okay, keep, no, all, and you know how to press this, and then Control R for refactor. So again, no need to touch your mouse, and you can do the same things here as well. So that's already really helpful. And for the last thing I want to show you, well, how to basically jump to the next error. So this is just one uh, thing that I use quite often as well. So for example, if I say, whatever, I have some typo here that doesn't exist. So then how to fix it without touching the mouse? Well, I could say um, here in my Vim setup, I go seven steps up or something like this, so seven lines up. Um, but if you down there, I can press F2 and hover or basically jump through the arrows that I have in the current file. So this is really helpful just for quicker navigation. F2 and say, no, I need to jump there to fix this field. So F2 for next highlighted error. Um, also works for warnings if you don't have an error in this current file and then you could just jump through that and navigate quicker. And just by knowing these uh, shortcuts, you will be already much more productive. And I think these are the most uh, important ones to know to really boost your productivity. And then as you go, you might learn other ones for special refactoring actions. If you find the topic of productivity interesting, you might want to check out a video course that I have on the topic linked down below. And also, I would really appreciate a like. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.